You know, I was on Twitter last night, and then people started saying to me uh, that uh, Destiny was on Tim Pool, and I thought nothing of that because I wasn't terribly interested in that anymore that I would be interested in any other, like, two people. But, but, everyone knows how much I love it when Tim Pool name checks me. <laughs> and um, apparently Tim Pool is very mad at everybody here. Yeah. Um, Cause this is a, uh, in reference to something that we did on uh, Thursday. Yeah. So it's. Oh, a, is this? A, so, oh, you did this on Thursday? Yeah, you weren't here. Yeah. So. Oh, that's why. That's why he's so mad. I was wondering why he's talking about it. What did you do on Thursday? We made fun of his terrible music. But this was a Thursday from like August of last year. This was not. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I remember when you guys Thursday. did that. But I, yeah. I thought like you did it like yesterday. No. Oh no. No, no. It was like it was. So this was like a seven year. seven months ago, eight months, oh, almost eight months ago. Yeah, he's he's okay. holding on. I remember. To this. Okay, okay. I oh. remember when he put out an album or a music mm -hmm. video or whatever mm -hmm. it was, and I was like, "Why is this coming up today?" And I thought you guys had talked about him yesterday. So okay. either either so he's perusing it. our our uh, channel for videos about him because this is old, or. Uh, he's just been carrying this with him for a long time. And, ah, and this, really and this is from a super chat he gets. Just an, he gets one, I think, every few episodes where there, where someone says, "Why won't you debate Sam?" And so he see. This is the problem yeah. that Tim has because he uh, sells off. Um, he he basically chooses money to be the way in which he addresses any type of criticism <laughs> some people could stand up and pay for it right. like you know what we do is like we, we just take phone calls uh, and 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 short of like your area code we don't screen right <laughs> sometimes i'm like i want this region of the country no i don't do yeah not but even. but uh, but and we you know we took that guy because he sent me the his area. he I, uh tweeted me his area code but uh, Tim, because he pays, this happened to Dave Rubin a lot too, where you know you you get paid to, to answer questions, and he he got upset about it. Let's uh, mm. let's hear this. I haven't heard all of it because someone just. All right, good. Tim, Sam Cedar seems to think you are afraid to debate him, claiming that you asked him to come on the show during COVID as his excuse for not coming on. Would you publicly ask him to come on the show? So the issue with Sam is uh, I've known him for a really long time, and. I made a tweet where I was like, we, we typically invite people on the left to come on the show, and then they just never do. They never respond, or they respond once, and they don't get back to us. And then Hassan and Sam both said, I'll totally do it. And so I privately messaged both of them and said, awesome, would be excited to have you. Especially Sam, because Sam was the first guy to ever give me a shout out in media ever. He said, like, oh, look at these guys, Occupy Wall Street, fantastic work. And I was like, we'll, we'll cover the cost of everything, we'll fly you out. And then Sam basically was just like, I'm not going on your show. And then tweeted, accusing me of like, you know, making it up or something. Oh, it might have been a COVID thing because he just went on um, oh, Patrick no, David's show. He tweeted at me that he was going to come on the show and then privately was like, oh, I'm not coming out there. And then uh, I'm like, no. okay, whatever. Like you said you would. You actually set a date and everything. I told you the date. I told you the time. You said yes, you agreed. And now when I'm setting this up, you're like flaking out behind the scenes and then putting, putting me on the spot. If Sam wanted to, would you host a debate with him on your show? No. And uh, Hassan, yes. Hassan politely messaged me and said, hey, look, man, I know I said I would. I feel kind of he said something like I feel pretty bad, but like I'm not comfortable no. flying right now with COVID. And I was like, totally understand, dude. No problem. Oh, my Later God. on, when I asked him again, he's like, bro, I host my own show. And I said, you are totally correct. Like the idea that I'm going to ask someone who hosts their own show to cancel their show to come on my show. I just totally get it. So if I like Kyle Kalinsky, for instance, <laughs> has talked about coming on the show before. But I'm like, whenever you can, because I know you do your own show. Like I'm not, you know people want to come on the show it's 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 like doing me a favor but the issue with sam is that i i believe he is like he's a grifter right you don't think he believes what he says <laughs> i believe i think i think maybe half of it i think he doesn't know <laughs> about a lot of issues and he says things just for the sake of shock value he makes a bunch of videos hold on for one second before we get to that i'm gonna read now our exchange i just found it okay and the weird thing is where he says you bailed well, I, I, did, I did, I did, I did bail. I mean, part of what he's saying is true. Um, and, but part of what he's saying is completely, like, and the weird thing is the timing thing is also really different. Okay. Um, all right, here it is. So he goes on, he says that on Twitter and I say, I'll do it. And he goes, um, here it is. Okay, so, it, and, and people can go back and find the public version of this. It's back in October of 2020. Now, 
I don't know if people remember there was a pandemic going on um, and okay here it is so oh we went on for a long time to talk about this okay all right so October 10th 2020 yes 2020 and no one's vaccinated yet understand there's no vaccination uh, I had done an interview with Tim Poole via zoom or whatever it was from his show i said i would do it he had asked me a long time and uh so i write october 10th 2020 at 1 41 p.m i don't know when the the public tweet was but that's on dm so what's the details he writes i can have lydia arrange everything for you show is 8 p.m live in studio dc area we can fly you out and get you a motel nearby we hang out for two hours and talk about current events i can do a group chat to connect you if you want you can just send me your email and we can set it up and um and i write i can't fly down to dc i do a three-hour daily show you don't do any remotes and he goes we set the show back up in january for in person only we don't have a way to connect everyone on a Skype call or display it. We've rejected some centrist right-wing people, but, 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 but I get it. It's one of the challenges of getting guests. You and Hassan host your own content, so it's probably harder for you, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. And I write back, COVID hasn't affected your bringing people into the studio? And he goes, no, no one. We actually stopped guests for a while over it. Rogan never did. Then we started up again in the past month or so again. And I wrote, Trump never did either. And I did the shrug he just because got Trump COVID. had just gotten COVID. I guess you roll the dice and hope you don't pull a seven. Uh, and, I, and I wrote, maybe if I have a day off. And then, and that was October 10th, 2020. And then on October 13th, he wrote something publicly. That was the end of our conversation. I'll just, I should just release all this. I don't know why you suddenly took offense to the above reply. Care to elaborate? I wrote him at 534. And he goes, you agreed to an in-studio interview for publicity. You lied. And I wrote, I had absolutely no idea. You only did in-studio interviews and had no idea you weren't in New Jersey anymore. The last one we did was on Skype. And he goes, you just wanted to rile up your followers. The tweet said in-studio, we covered travel. You dragged me to rile up your followers. That's a complete tone, yeah. right? Change. And I think something happened there in those two days and i think it had to do with either like crowder or rubin or one of those things right and because that's when he said like i was a blacklisted and he goes you dragged me to rile up and you're full of shit." and i said i didn't see any travel tweet dude how in the world would i have accepted tonight as a date if i thought i had to travel from upstate new york starting at 3 p.m after my show and get back here by 8 30 to prep for tomorrow's show that makes no sense uh bullshit. you did a segment pulling clips from my studio show not to mention I had to do a pre-record. And A, as far as I remember, it wasn't an interview. And B, just because you do one interview in studio, how could I possibly assume that you only do them in studio? The entire channel you pulled from is from a live studio show. And I said, you have like 10 channels. No offense, but I don't follow what shows you have. And he goes on, I mean, he just goes on and on, but we can see that exchange there. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but just you, sh you should just take those screenshots and put just put That's them on Twitter. Just do, it. Just do it today. Yeah, I will do it. Someone in yeah. YouTube chat just because said this is this is the Tim Files. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna release the Tim Files. Hashtag Tim Files. <laughs> <laughs> but something changed in there, and and uh, you know, folks can go sleuth around and figure out what was happening during those days. But something happened. But but say now, now that you're vaccinated, I mean. Oh, I've told him. I, I, I'll you'll go. go. Oh, I think I said that. I mean. Um, Let's see. And then, oh, and, and really, he was mad because of all these th things that we commented on his video that I made that he said he's talking okay. about. You dragged me for not talking about this. And I am like, I don't know what you're referring to. And, I, <laughs> and, and hey, if he thinks you're a grifter or he thinks you don't have a good knowledge base, which like. OK, there, there people are things, can make that decision. There are things that people could say about you, but the, I don't think like still going back and forth live studio i didn't realize what are you talking about the tweet said open the 13th and then i i i i, I printed our exchange um and that you claim i'm lying is okay and then he said like he did write live 8 p.m in studio mm -hmm. the show is live 8 p.m in studio but live doesn't mean in person yeah we do a live show every day and we almost none of our guests yeah. are in person <laughs> exactly and he said, uh, I assumed I could do remote, Tim. I'm hours from an airport here. Uh, this is when I was living upstate during right. yeah. parts of the... You claim I'm lying. It's hard to believe. Like, what's the lie? And uh, 
I mentioned concern about COVID and then we, we keep going on and on. And then um, he goes, you shouldn't tr publicly try to drag me unless you know what you're talking about. And I go, if I want to drag you about how irresponsible that is, I would have dragged you for it. Uh, and then he's claiming that people weren't dying, that COVID wasn't resurging. This is in 2020 still. Um, and he's like, I'm really trying to sort of understand, look, uh, and then the last one was, I guess, October 13th. I am not and have not knocked your format. If that's your format, I can respect it. I was expressing the reasons that made it too heavy a lift for me. Happy to have me on my show. If that's good faith, no travel involved. That last part of friendly joke, but also true. We could do over Zoom. And that was the last I heard of him. OK, sorry. So uh, this is good. Context. I just want to make the point <laughs> that Tim is lying here and he knows it and he's upset because apparently you guys a year ago mocked his music. I think he believes what he says. I believe, I think, I think maybe half of it. I think he doesn't know about a lot of issues and he says things just for the sake of shock value. He makes a bunch of videos. He's he, like, another thing is like, all he would do is rag on Dave Rubin. He's like one of those guys who makes a bunch of videos just talking about drama and people that I'm really not interested. And then the publicly agreeing to come on the show in good faith, like the, when I made a good faith offer and then privately backtracking and then putting it on me and now claiming I'm scared. Like the whole thing's a bit. Tim's scared to debate me. No, dude, he's just a low brow grifter. Bro, I'll have you on anytime you want to come on. Like here you are. Mm -hmm. And I think you're you're like substantially more uh, intelligent and capable of debate than Sam Cedar is. That's I mean, probably. obviously that's true. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think Sam's a really smart guy. I mean, I can't I can't speak to your private messages, but um, yeah, I would hope. So I don't know. I don't, I, I don't I, feel I, him as a grifter. I feel, I feel like Sam is pretty pretty. He's pretty smart compared to most of the people. If I if I was scared of anybody in the left of debate, I think it would generally be. Sam I'll tell Sager, you. But. I'll tell you one of the personal negative experiences. Okay. But like, still waiting to have him on the show was when I tried to explain to him deontological versus utilitarian moral oh my philosophy. God, I can't how I watched that, <laughs> and he didn't understand it. And so my like, how do you how do you convey an idea to someone? Who, has, who doesn't understand these concepts? Well, I went for pop culture, and instead, uh, like it was a it was a bunch of. I remember because you said the villain is usually the utilitarian guy. I remember I watched this right. clip. I remember yeah. And so my, I said when I, I think we're talking about universal healthcare, and I said it's utilitarian versus deontological morality or ethics, right? Deontological ethics is basically stating that you cannot take an immoral action against an individual regardless of the outcome, and utilitarian thinking is an in, uh, uh, an action against an individual which is unethical is justified if it benefits the greater. And Sam was like, I don't know what that means. And I'm like, okay, how do I debate a guy who doesn't understand these concepts? Well, me thinking like I'm here to convey ideas in good faith. Pause said, for one second. Incidentally, I'm quite sure I said, I don't care. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> you said, I don't care. Yeah, you didn't. I, I'm you didn't quite know. sure I said, said, I don't care, care about <laughs> these philosophical differences. And uh, then he wanted to say like, and to make it, you feel bad about it. Uh, Zeus from the Marvel com uh, show or whatever it is. Thanos. Thanos, Thanos uh, is uh, you know a uh, is a utilitarian, utilitarian. and uh, because he's willing to let um, half the planet die or whatever, all the planets die to save half the other planet. Yeah, and I, I just I didn't I didn't care about that. That's not relevant to me and to the argument I was making. Um, but he's really upset about that. Mm. I feel like I must have hurt Tim's personal feelings, and uh, I can understand that. But there's still more, right? He's upset. Go ahead. He's really oh, upset. We still really carrying a grudge. The, the music you know, thing. I should say to Tim, honestly, it's one thing for you not to have me on your show. That's fine. It's, it's your show. But to carry around this type of hurt and this type of anger and resent, it's not healthy for you. Yeah. It's not healthy. I mean... Yeah, okay, you're showing me, you're not going to let me on your show, that's fine, I get it. But this is tearing you up inside. I know. And and I worry about that, and I know people are going to say, you're just saying that to be shocking. Go ahead. Well, I, and I just, we also should add that he has no idea what this show is. We do a whole hour every day interviewing historians, interviewing experts and fields union organizers um it hurts that he doesn't really watch the show i mean listen here's the thing that it's Tim okay does that he doesn't say. watch the show but he shouldn't uh, make claims about the show if he doesn't really know you know and it's friday so we're doing a lot of these uh you know have fun segments and this and that <clears throat> but he should understand that like the the tim himself is like it's like going out for dinner like at a nice restaurant 
and you've eaten the appetizer in the main course and mm -hmm. maybe you have a dessert and you maybe you get a bottle of wine and then you're leaving and as you leave they got a bowl of those like white mints you know what i'm talking about yeah 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 and you take one and well i'll take like two or three and i'll eat one and then i'll put a couple in my pocket i'm like oh for later but then you don't find that for like two weeks later until you're on the subway and you're like hmm oh i'm great. gonna eat this that's when we get to the tim section of the show that's what it is he's missed the entire dinner he doesn't mm -hmm. watch that part he just watches us eating the mint but let's go understand these concepts well me thinking like I'm here to convey ideas in good faith said think about Thanos versus like Captain America Thanos wants to wipe out and then his response was to make a video and all of his fans mocking me for talking about Marvel but here's a better one when we released our first song he ran it through an audio filter to make it sound bad and then played it on his show calling it calling it garbage and lying about it I just saw like that the, the dude is just the lowest of low tier grifters did he I feel like I saw them I Bro, watched he them. ran my song I watched an audio filter. was he on that episode because it was the girl and the other guy the girl and uh, the other I, don't guy. I don't remember if he hey, was on the show but. Did, did you run his song if we did that okay. without telling people I would have a uh, a problem with it unless it was Dude, obvious. I so just let's just be clear. This was August of last year. Um, I don't have the audio capabilities or like the the wherewithal to. Dude, I was running the was, board. Oh, was, you were. I was running the computer. Here. I put I put it up. I, we just played the YouTube video. So if he thinks the song sounded bad, it just sounded bad because. I it mean, sounded Bradley's bad. inability to run <laughs> anything in terms of audio <laughs> would, is putting. I and now, able to filter it. And that was a year ago. And that was a year ago. That was a year ago. Like, I'm, I'm much more equipped now, and I don't. I still don't think I would have been able to run it through an audio filter to do it. I wish Tim could warping. see our board and structure here and see it's how little of a capacity no. that we have. Yeah, to I run went an into, audio when filter. I went into like uh, the the PDB uh, studios, the PBD uh, studios. I was like, oh, Jesus, this is a serious <laughs> operation. This is like, if people can imagine, like, you know, uh, like a guy's house who spends all his time at Radio Shack back in the day, that's what this looks like. Yeah. There are cables everywhere. Everything is hodgepodge. Nobody knows how to, like, we've got a hum. Just jiggle everything, and that's it. But go ahead. M. Cedar's show played uh -huh. my, played the song we put out and put it through this weird filter to make it sound like garbage. Okay. And that song actually did really well. It's the best song we, we've had so far. Charted on Billboard in a bunch of different categories. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, oh, it's so bad. Oh, man, it sounds like Nickelback. And I'm like, if anything, it sounds like emo, not Nickelback. Okay. You know, I'll point something it's out about Sam. It's all <laughs> fake drifting. Sam went on Patrick Bet David's uh, Valuetainment podcast. Yeah, I thought it was it. very cool. I didn't see the whole thing, but they talked about Medicare. They talked about finances. And then, Sam, you put up a video on your channel that it says it's a picture of you and Pat, and it says Sam Cedar debates rich guy who hates taxes. Like you didn't even use his name. That is dirty, thing, dude. dude. It's all grifting. It's no, all fake garbage. Like he's a huge podcaster. You got you should make a big deal out of that. He's grifting. All right, now I should say, I don't ever do the titling on this program. I don't go back and review the videos. It's it is the way that we pay for the show, uh, or at least part of it, and um, and. To be honest, I had never heard of Patrick Bet David before we, he contacted us. Um, so I, you know, I'm just not aware of him. He may be big in that circle, but I don't know if our audience was terribly aware and, of him either. And the look, the fact is, the guy is the first line of his bio. Go to his bio page. The first line of his bio is he made over two hundred million dollars in some insurance thing. So what do you want me to tell you? The operating fact is that he is a rich guy. Yeah. Also, the the girl and the other guy, I'm just going to return to that. Matt, <laughs> well, I mean, Matt Binder w was on his show. Was on Destiny's show? No. He, he did Tim's, to show. Tim's show. Oh, I don't know. But can I just say, too, um, it's it's rich, and this is obviously, honestly, of, of both of them, of course, Destiny... As much as you, Sam has had, uh, you know, tips with Destiny on his show, Destiny, I think, has a lot of respect for you, Sam. And, and I think that was made clear. But Destiny's entire channel does the similar thing with SEO algorithm-based titling, where you just say, leftist host melts down, so-and-so. Like, you don't make it as specific, because if, if people don't know who Patrick Bet David is, they're not going to click on it.
Yeah. It's, if, if they see if they see Sam is debating a rich guy, it could have been a phone call and they'd want to watch that. Yeah, it's it, it's there's there's like it's it's kind of I think it's a frivolous argument and it belies like either a willful or a non willful lack of uh, understanding about what how we make clips and what does well and what doesn't. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna complain about titling, it, it seems like quite a shallow argument, and you just need to watch the video and judge for yourself. And of course, it's coming from Ian. Uh, Kanye is gonna be seen as the savior of the Jews. Crossland over here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> but Ian Ian said some nice stuff about the show in the past, so it's just it's, I find that to be a weird argument. But anyway, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't, I don't think, uh, I mean, uh, when Patrick put they they put up clips of of the interview, and I don't think they use my name, and why would they? Right, right. It should be like you know whatever a uh, weird leftist or tax loving guy calls for more taxes <laughs> yeah or, right that's i mean uh, i don't i'm not gonna take offense to that that's the thing is that like you know so much of this for uh, a lot of people in this business it is really about like celebrity and it is about like there's a lot of personal things in here and i i want to make this clear to tim and ian and all of them i don't I don't harbor any personal feelings towards them at all. I am just aware there's a lot of young people who go and watch your show and, or maybe m middle aged people who watch your show, they get bad ideas uh, based upon bad information, bad senses about politics. And I, to the extent that I, you know, mock you or mock your music or call you a rich guy or whatever. I am doing it because I want to diminish you as a messenger for that bad information. I'm trying to be honest here. I am mocking you, not because I have a problem with you as a person. There are some people out there I think are really atrocious. Um, but I'm the the reason why I show up and do that here every day is not because of what, uh, you know, I can do that at home. The reason why I show up and do that every day here. And I think we all sort of like feel this way um, is because I want to interfere with your ability to spread bad ideas based upon my definition of what good ideas. I want society to, the outcomes of society to be better for the most amount of people and that involves things like redistribution certain amount of egalitarianism equality communalism there's a host of other things and because uh you of the medium this is the medium so don't take so much offense it's okay tim if emma doesn't like your music yeah I'm sure I don't like it, but I've never heard it. And Bradley doesn't like your music. And if we're going to mock it by changing, uh, like uh, auto tuning it or whatever it is that we do, we will cop to that and do it on purpose. I mean, you know, I, if it was up to me, I'd play your music and just keep hitting fart noises on my board. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I miss that day at yeah. work. No. Uh, so. Right. We'll be upfront about it if we do it, Tim. But um, you don't have to worry about that for now. It just sounded as it, it sounded like what it sounded like. Yeah, there you go. E. Uh, really cool says I agree. Some of the clips are badly titled. Tell whoever's doing that we're not MR. We're MR, not TMR. Kind of my little pet peeve. Sure, there's you know there's different um, there's you know there's different arguments about it. But basically, I am not a business guy. I am not a manager. I mean, I try. Well, but I'm a little bit loose. Hey, I mean, yeah, but it's, I'm not complaining. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I am not going to spend the time to micromanage or mostly manage what anybody does on the show. It's like show up, make sure things work, and then I'm happy. And everything else is like will fall into place. I'm sorry. If you want to, if Tim wants to pay, for someone to come and title the shows differently, or Ian wants to do this in his spare time. Godspeed. More power to you. Godspeed, buddies.